In the current version of the connectome, three brain regions are included. Those are the hippocampal formation, the parahippocampal region and the retrosplenial cortex. In the next few slides I will explain how these brain regions are represented in the connectome. In our connectome, sub-areas of the hippocampal formation are displayed by boxes. From left to right, one can see the dentate gyrus, CA3, CA1 and subiculum. To understand what is displayed in our connectome, we will discuss hippocampal area CA1 in greater detail. We start with the horizontal slice I showed you previously. We have already covered how anatomists define 3D position of CA1 in the rat brain. But how can one capture that information in a two-dimensional figure? Before being able to answer this question, one has to understand how anatomists describe brain connectivity in scientific reports. Unfortunately, the literature is very unsystematic and information about brain connections is presented at varying levels of spatial detail. For example, one could find in the literature that CA3 projects to CA1. This is very generic description when compared to the projection from the stratum pyramidala of distal CA3 to the stratum radiatum of proximal CA1. To include all possible levels of spatial detailedness of a description of brain connections in our connectome, we created a representation of CA1 with varying levels of spatial detail. To understand this, first divide the area box representing CA1 into four quadrants. Next, give each quadrant a number. Quadrant 1 describes connections at the highest level of anatomical detail. In the white boxes we find the layers of CA1. Stratum lacunosum moleculare, stratum radiatum, stratum pyramidale, stratum oriens. In addition, the proximal distal axis of C1 is visible. Finally, information can be displayed along the septotemporal axis of CA1. In order to display this in the brain, we have to look in a coronal section. Information about the septal temporal axes in the CA1 area box is represented along the vertical direction. If information about 3D position of a connection is incomplete, the lines that are drawn in the connectum will originate from quadrant 2, 3 or 4. Quadrant 2 describes connections of CA1 at the level of layers and along the septotemporal axes. Quadrant 3 describes connections of CA1 along the proximal distal axis and layers. Quadrant 4 describes connections when only layer information is present. I'd like to point out that in a similar way as CA1, all the other structures are built up and represented in the connectome. I hope that you found this tutorial informative and I thank you for your attention.